Now, uh, since we are running out of time, I think I'd like to multitask a little bit and uh, start the award uh, process. Um, as many of you know, uh, back in 2014, when this group met in College Park, Maryland, uh, there was a uh, effort led by Brian O'Neill to greatly expand the role of the poster part of the uh, of the annual meetings, uh, which I think, m much to my surprise, was incredibly successful. Thank you, Brian, for uh, irritatingly reminding us to try this because it just might work, and it did, and I think it's grown uh, even more since then. So two things I'd like to do now is announce, uh, as per our steering committee meeting on Sunday, that next year's meeting will again be six years later in College Park, Maryland, hosted by the University of Maryland and the Joint Global Change Research Institute. Jay Edmonds is here. I don't know if Stephanie may have left by now. Is Stephanie here? Stephanie Waldup. Uh, she's walking around. Okay, so that's kind of a done deal. The exact timing, I think, will be decided in the next uh, month or so, so I can announce that and then conveniently introduce Jay to introduce this year's poster winner. I think we all um, uh, think of this as a major award. Some of us think the poster award is actually more important than the Lifetime Achievement Award. And of course, I'm one, I'm one of the people who feel that way, so Jay. Uh, so, um, let's see. Wait, uh, I think we do the Lifetime Achievement. No, I think you're up first. I think. I think I think I come after you. <laughs> so, hopefully the slides are in the right order. Uh, so uh, those are, so back to a little history. Uh, those of you who were at Sevilla last year knew that for the first time there was a kind of extraordinary lifetime achievement award that, that was handed out, uh, and uh, it was decided then to not do that award every year, but only uh, if and when appropriate. Uh, this year, as the committee uh, reconsidered it, um, we thought we might not do one, but it actually turned out that I think there were three finalists that all seemed very meritorious. But given the timing uh, uh, of this meeting and last meeting and the, the way we ended the last meeting where uh, we did a tribute to um, Bill Nordhaus, uh, the group decided unanimously to award this year's Extraordinary Lifetime Achievement Award to um, uh, Bill Nordhaus of Yale. University, who I think most of you know or at least uh, know of, uh, and uh, we, we put together a little, uh, as we as Betlev did with Kate for for that annual award, a little uh, kind of rationale for why uh, we're acknowledging Bill in this way, and I think there are really, from my point of view, three reasons: continuous major contributions to the literature of climate change economics over many decades, as you may recall from my. Uh, tribute last year, it was not just the DICE model, but contributions to all the different scientific uh, parts of the puzzle that underlie the DICE model. So I think I went through probably 15 or 20 different areas. Uh, technology change springs to mind and uncertainty, several, several other ones. Uh, I also think on a personal level, all of us feel that we are either inspired, mentored, or befriended by Bill Nordhaus, uh, one or the above, I, in the fortunate category of having a 40-year history of feeling that way in all three dimensions. I think many of you are, which is part of the, the, uh, the, the, the tradition and legend of Bill, Bill Nordhaus. And then finally, oh, by the way, uh, he just happened to get the Nobel Prize uh, for Economics in 2018 for its, uh, his efforts to develop an integrated assessment model. Uh, we kind of went through this last year. Uh, but thanks to Max Devoni, uh, we actually knew a, a few weeks ago that we were going to make this award, so we actually have a video. Couldn't get Bill here or on uh, remote dial-in, so we have a video from Bill, which we'll show right now.
first seat, and I sang alone uh, across the water, across the Pacific to Japan. Uh, I have been asked by Max Tavoni uh, if I would say a few words on this occasion. Uh, I learned that I've been awarded the Lifetime Distinction Award of the Society of the Integrated Assessment Modeling Consortium. Uh, assuming that actually has taken place, I am extremely honored at that award. I'd like to take a few minutes um, in this to reflect on the history of integrated assessment modeling. Um, it goes back a long way, and, and this is a wonderful representation, and I send my greetings to the founders, uh, Naki Nakachanovich, uh, with whom I've worked uh, a long time, and one of our uh, books that we've worked on together is uh, shown in this pile here. Uh, John Wyatt, who also I've uh, been a long-term co colleague with, going back to the Energy Modeling Forum, and then before that, the Modeling Resource Group. And um, a person I know only less, not so well, is Makiko Kainumo, who is a, a, the third co-founder of, um, of the consortium. So to you and the uh, people who are joining you in Japan, uh, and the people who couldn't make it, uh, I'd say hello. So let me, as I was thinking about this, um, what I might say this morning, actually, I picked up the New York Times and there was a lead front page story saying that people were extremely surprised and disappointed, of course, but surprised that the emissions trajectories of countries were not um, going to meet the two degree goal, even though we have the Paris Accord that was uh, recently signed. Well. I think if you're in the audience there, if you're an integrated assessment modeler in the field of climate change at least, uh, you were hardly surprised. Um, this has been known since uh, really the day one after the Paris Accord. It has been confirmed by many modeling studies since that time. Uh, so uh, the only surprise is this is that people weren't aware of this and didn't take it into account. But that's just the long line of um, work that has gone on in the integrated assessment modeling community uh, and uh, very fine work it is. I'd say a word about the deep history of integrated assessment modeling. Uh, it's, uh, if you go back and look at the, uh, the citations and the, and the searches and the Google word search, um, it, it, the three early places where integrated assessment modeling uh, the word, actual words occur were, I think, first in agriculture, where it was a combination of weather events and agricultural productivity. Uh, then the next was the acid grain program, uh, NAPAP, in the United States uh, in the 19, roughly 1980s. And then, of course, um, finally, in energy modeling, particularly climate change modeling, um, starting at various points. Um, so if I were to go back to the genealogy, not the citations, it would pretty clearly start with uh, Koopmans and Katarovich, uh, the discoverers of linear programming. Uh, they had a very integrated assessment point of view. Uh, Katarovich, perhaps the most ambitious, um, and his work was trying to understand how to put pricing, uh, how to use pricing in a separately planned economy, and the idea of using shadow prices as a way of finding the appropriate market prices, even though it was a separately planned economy, it was a revolutionary idea, and of course leads right into the work that many of us do in trying to determine the shadow prices for carbon dioxide emissions, or what's now called the social cost of carbon. Um, so that was a very integrated approach. Uh, Charlie Koopman's also in his work on tankers. Uh, and the, the working of tankers with, uh, was an early use of optimization techniques that are now widely used. Um, in the area that um, we, many of us do, which is energy and climate change, uh, I started my own work in the 1970s. I found actually, I was just thumbing through, I found the computer prints. I can't really see it, but I've done a few pages of an energy model, which is part of the earliest uh, carbon dioxide model. It's uh, written in Fortran, uh, and uh, it's uh, pretty pretty close to machine language. It's not really machine language, but 
it's much more complex than the software that we write now. Um, the earliest model that I worked on was at Yasa with, uh, with Naki uh, Kachanovich, who was a colleague there, um, Alan Mann as well, who was a great, a great assessment model. Uh, and that is, uh, here's a copy of the Yasa working paper from 1975, and it was actually just republished in the uh, June 2019 edition of the American Economic Review. And as I worked on that, um, it was surprising that there were almost no changes I had to make in that. Uh, that uh, I mean, that there were some things I might have, it was clearly a fossil from an earlier age, but uh, the fossil didn't need too much. Actually, I did, didn't have any cleaning at all. So you could see, you could see some of the first uh, work attempts at innovative assessment modeling from 1975. Uh, an interesting part of that was actually that uh, it used the two-degree target as a um, as a, a device for closing the model, an integrated assessment model. You know, at that time, it, I thought it was very unsatisfactory. Um, we then move on to uh, move forward. I'll say something about why didn't uh, I ask the question? Why didn't we have integrated assessment modeling before World War II or before the 1950s? And the answer is that we had, didn't have the technical capabilities of doing it because it would require data, it would require software, and it would require computational facilities, computational abilities that was beyond the, the beyond us in the pre-computer age. I just said one other thing going back to the early uh, phases. I think actually if I were to nominate the first integrated assessment model of a kind we know today, it would be the early econometric models, uh, macroeconomic models, which were integrated in the sense they integrated different parts of the economy. They weren't integrated across different disciplines. Well, unless you consider statistics, econometrics, economics, data science, estimation, and so on, different disciplines, but they didn't include, as we do today, say, the physical, the physical sciences or atmospheric chemistry, but they were integrated in the sense of using the multi-equation point uh, approach. The, the, it's interesting, Koopmans, who was an inventor both of econometrics and linear programming, or now mathematical programming, um, that even though one of the branches of his discovery, which was econometrics, has been widely used in many areas, it's the other branch of his discovery, which was linear programming, and then uh, which is the core of many of our algorithms in mathematical optimization today. It's interesting that our discipline is almost 100% following that second route of mathematical programming based on following up the linear programming. Um, there's virtually no econometric integrated assessment models, or virtually none. Uh, but they all come sort of two branches of the genealogy, if you like, uh, the genealogical tree, uh, that uh, the integrated assessment modeling took the programming one rather than the econometric one. Well, I think, um, I think we can celebrate um, the achievements of integrated assessment modeling. Uh, unlike many areas of society, uh, they've, they've got, it has shown a structure, how to think about climate change, what kinds of policies are effective, what kinds of policies are ineffective, and this, um, this central organizing core, which is the social cost of carbon, or the shadow price of carbon dioxide emissions in our technical language, uh, has played a big role. It comes. It wouldn't be possible to even think in that way without the kind of integrated assessment modeling that we do now. Well, I wish you a good meeting. I'm, I'm sorry I can't join you, uh, but I say hello to my friends uh, uh, in Japan today, and I wish, wish you good luck and have a good meeting. And goodbye. Yeah, that was really great. Uh, thanks, uh, and truly deserved to honor for Bill. I, I can't help, though, but point out that his uh, unclosed business between the two branches actually was front and center in most of the, I think, all the talks in the first session this morning. So maybe we can uh, maybe we can accommodate Bill's uh, uh, pent up uh, energy to move in in, in uh, that direction. Yeah, it also reminds me of I actually first met Bill through. Um, Charlene Koopmans, who I got to hang out with down at the, the Cowles Foundation back in the 1970s, which is how I got my started. What became integrated assessment? So at this point, I'd like to um, 
finally turn it back to Jay uh, for the now, now the uh, poster award winner gets to follow Bill Murdoch. So I guess since I said it's a higher level award, it's <laughs> appropriate. So Jay. <laughs> So now we uh, we have the best poster award, uh, and uh, uh, the uh, best poster award uh, goes to uh, 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 Pedro uh, Rochedo. Uh, from uh, Copay, uh, and it was for the uh, uh, opportunity cost of the uh, refusal uh, to a global dietary change. Uh, this was a, an award that we, uh, there were a number of judges, uh, and uh, while I would say that in the, uh, the, the poster session we had a bumper crop of extraordinary posters. Uh, there were many that were, were brought forward as uh, excellent examples, uh, but this poster was the one poster that what every judge uh, uh, put down their list of the best posters. It was the one that they all agreed uh, was on that list uh, with uh, no ambiguity. Uh, the, the criteria that we used um, were really three. Uh, we looked at uh, the, uh, uh, the quality of the, uh, uh, of the research uh, that was being presented. Uh, we looked at the, uh, the, the, uh, the presentation itself in the poster uh, in that it was able to convey uh, succinctly uh, the key findings of the work that was being conducted. And finally, the ability of the presenter uh, to communicate uh, the, uh, uh, the the research uh, and the importance of its findings. Uh, and so, uh, uh, with no further ado, let me uh, thank uh, Pedro for uh, his uh, uh, poster, uh, for joining our meeting, uh, and uh, uh, if you'd like to come forward, uh, Pedro, uh, and uh, just... Uh, <laughs> gets the award for the most beautiful poster. Uh, he just uh, uh, presented it. Um, and uh, uh, I think it's also uh, an example of a poster that does a really good job in, in communicating uh, what it, uh, it, it, uh, its findings were. Uh, it has a nice, uh, clear, uh, when you get up close to the poster, uh, it is a very clear um, figure that summarizes what uh, the, the findings of the research were, it has uh, why it's important, uh, what, how to read the poster, uh, and, the, uh, uh, and, and the elements of the research uh, very succinctly described in, uh, in, in the details immediately below it. And it's a, it's a good example for those who those of us who are still doing posters uh, to kind of look to see how do you how do you do this communication uh, in a way uh, that is uh, is efficient. Uh, and so with that, uh, let me turn the floor back over to Jeff. Great. I know people are probably really hungry now. Um, so uh, I just want to thank like everybody uh, who is uh, in pulling off this conference, which I think we all agree was uh, quite, quite successful and uh, going to be a hard, uh, hard set a hard, high bar to uh, talk uh, next year, which I'm sure we'll be around here, right, Jay? Yes. Uh, so I literally like people to stand and uh, be recognized uh, for change. I think most of them in the room. So first I'd like to thank with our uh, ever resourceful secretary for the INC, Monica Everly, and Cynthia. <laughs> Side, Devin and Duran and his team, and anybody who's on, on your team wants to. Uh, 
and certainly our uh, organizing committee here in Scuba, which is uh, uh, Toshi Masui and Shinichiro Uminori, and their team. Uh, there's too many, too many team members to be acknowledged with all the timekeepers and uh, so on. So please, let's give a, a round of applause. Just two things to say now. Well, we look forward to seeing you all in College Park, Maryland next uh, next fall about this time. Uh, interestingly, this will be probably either right before or after the presidential election. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure you're all looking for Finally, I'd like to thank uh, all of you here who came, some of you from a great distance away. You are truly the beating heart of the integrated assessment problem source you have younger the heart, the stronger it eats, and we're very pleased about that. So with that said, see you next year. Thanks, thanks.